get this. Okay, so folks, um, first and foremost, I do realize um, that there are some glitches with accessing the videos um, via Dropbox. Some of you may not have Dropbox. Um, so I've been talking to my IT people and I will, um, what we're planning on doing is uploading, as soon as I can get the password, we're gonna upload these videos and the PowerPoint to our YouTube channel, to our Connecticut RCMD YouTube channel. Um, I, I tried to do a back, um, a backwards flip to get it loaded on the website, but um, it, was, it was gonna be too heavy for the website in terms of loading. So it would take forever for you guys to load it from there. So optimally what we'll do is we'll, um, I should be able to get that settled by tomorrow so you'll be able to access this video as well as the other one as soon as I coordinate like three people. So uh, my apologies that um, for those of you who can't access it via Dropbox, if you, I think what I will do is that I will send a Dropbox link to the larger group um, either tonight or tomorrow morning with each of the videos so that you guys can see them. Um, and uh, while I'm while I'm working through with staff to get it get them uploaded, okay. So that took me one minute to say. And um, so we're going to go down through um, our regional collaboration, town by town, uh, working together. And um, again, doing a quick recap, the boring parts. Um, but you'll see what's highlighted here is the coordination to promote and conserve. And then our influence areas, which we talked about earlier, but how they partner up with marketing. We're going to have an example of that. And we've invited and are really grateful to have John Hankins and I think John Boldix on the call too, um, who will be presenting on efforts at the Hop River Trail Alliance. And I think you're going to learn a lot from, from that particular presentation. And next we have... Um, the recap of our stakeholder groups. We have 126 members. Today, I now have 127. Um, I just got a nice email from um, Connecticut Latina Outdoors. Um, Joanna Recon is, leads a um, uh, girls for running, uh, it's, a, it's an organization that helps young girls um, with running and promoting outdoors in Hartford, but they work statewide. Um, they're a new group. And because Wyndham's population is 40% Latino, um, I want to make sure that I engage the Latino population in Wyndham um, and throughout Connecticut. And then also we have other organizations, other organizations that we'd like to partner with, which is Color Outside and then Connecticut Lit Land Conservation Council. Um, uh, and as well as we already have been re reached out and have, have participation from the Connecticut Horse Council presentation there. So, um, and again, this is the SCORP findings, why we're doing this. We're, we're, we know that there's users out there. We know that there's possibilities for each of the towns. Um, and so we're gonna jump right into the marketing um, aspect. So coordinating marketing in the airline state park trail. So I just, these are sample of some of the events that are going on on the airline trail. I, I touched on that at the last meeting. And what you'll notice is that, um, oh, they're not advancing. Hold on, sorry. <laughs> there you go. I'm advancing my slides on my other screen. Okay. And here's the partners, score findings. All right, now we're caught up. Marketing the airline state park trail, coordinating with event sponsors. Um, and I touched on this earlier uh, on, on, the, on the last workshop. So we have the annual ghost run and they mention the airline trail here. If you go to the last Green Valley, they have their Walktober and there's sometimes hikes on the airline trail, but um, groups of um, our stakeholders that are participating in this project might wanna think about um, doing some extra hikes for the next last Green Valley Walktober uh, in 2023. Um, and to promote the trail and the, the beauty of the trail. And then we have the Tackle the Trail event that happens. Um, the, the promotion of the airline trail is basically an amazing place. Um, it's not, doesn't go into deep, uh, a deep dive onto the airline trail and all of the towns that surround it. There are, um, on that website, there are area attractions, eat, drink, and be merry, and local happenings, and rest easy. But when you click on them, there are no links. It doesn't take you anywhere. So I believe that when 
Monique and her team are working to populate this. But in the meantime, or in conjunction, it would be good to work with them. Again, collaboration and coordination with our sponsors, uh, with event sponsors to, to bring up um, concepts for our website that we've designed. So the effort um, that has gone forward uh, over the last two years, year and a half, um, with the leadership of uh, Tira Penn from Thompson, um, with an Eastern Connecticut Tourism Grant and matching funds from the towns, there has been an effort to coordinate these easy maps, these tiny little pocket maps that um, you can put in your wallet or you put in your back pocket and gives you a relative location to um, where you are on the airline trail. The unique aspect to this is that there are each of the maps is by town. So you'd have to actually carry 12 maps with you in your pocket um, if you want to go the whole trail. So we're trying to come up with some ideas of how can you market the whole trail on one map. Um, Pete Harry, who's on this call and will be doing a quick overview and presentation of the website that we've de he's designed um, in partnership with the towns. And the website is built off of a lot of the information that was gathered and highlighted in these easy maps. Um, but again, it's like I mentioned on the previous workshop, it's communication, communication, and communication. How do you constantly make sure that there's continuity of information and reliability of information flowing to the trail user. Okay, um, next. So you're, if you're ready, Pete, um, what we've done is that we've gone through the 12 town um, re regional marketing website for the trail. And this is a focus uh, for the trail user. It's with the trail user's perspective in mind while also simultaneously promoting the towns. The, the goal is, is to be welcoming to the trail users in your role as a host community. So it's inviting people to the party and then putting out the, putting out the, the, the snacks and the information and introducing them to the people at the party. Um, that's what the website is aiming to do um, while also promoting your town singularly rather than, uh, rather than uh, uh, um, looking at it in this amorphous 50 mile long corridor um, that's a state park, it's promoting your town singularly. So it's collectively promoting the town and singularly promoting the town. And then defining your services offered to trail users. Um, this is where eventually we want to get into where are the services and the amenities that people on the um, and local guidance to attractions, which is on the easy maps, marketing with trail tales and stories. We thank you. We, uh, from Frank Zikas, we already have a trail tale and we have our newsletter. Um, we're trying to do one more newsletter. We had a, a newsletter sample and I'm trying to do one more newsletter sample with kind of a young person's perspective uh, for the project. And then fundraising, it's an opportunity to do fundraising. And this hasn't been defined yet. It, it would take the, uh, which we're gonna talk about through this workshop, it would take a, an alliance of the 12 towns gathered as a group, uh, a, a formally organized group to decide, do you wanna do fundraising through this website? Do you wanna do advertising uh, to organizations through the website to raise funds? Um, there's a whole host of options that I will list in the plan but I am not going to make a decision on that. They will be listed as various options that you could take a look at. And then going back to coordinating with other events and then reporting options. This brought up at the last meeting also for infrastructure. And this actually is a really good communication tool um, that people can check in on, but it's a reporting option for local public works directors or, or staff or trail committees or park and rec to share up-to-date trail information. There have to be some rules and guidance about what you're sharing because it's a public website, but it's a way of just not only sharing with the trail user what's happening on the trail, but also our stakeholders that are, that are maintaining and working with infrastructure on the trail. So Pete, um, I think that's Yep. So Pete, would you want to give a quick, let me see, I can give you, I think you can use, share your screen. I can. So let me, you want me to do a, um, can you get in there? Yep, I can do it. All right. Oh, cannot start screen share while other participant is sharing. I am getting out of there. 
Okay, oh. so Pete's going to introduce you to the website. <laughs> Excellent. Um, hi, everybody. Thanks for the uh, great introduction. Jean, that was fantastic. I hope everyone can see my screen now. <clears throat> Wonderful. Everyone can see it? Excellent. Um, so I'm going to take you through uh, a few slides here that are going to uh, better display kind of what we have going on. Uh, we will be sharing a link to a beta site in the upcoming, uh, let's say, week, week and a half. It's just not quite ready for prime time yet. So we have a few screen grabs that we're going to bring everyone through. Um, so I'll, I'll run through the homepage quickly. I believe everyone's pretty much seen this. But from top to bottom, we're going to have uh, the navigation that Gene was explaining, where we'd be able to explore the region by town, um, learn more about the trail, be it history and whatnot. Uh, yeah. I could stay at the town hall. That's all right. You zoom away. I'm going upstairs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. There you go. Uh, trail tales, as Jean said, where we'd have uh, unique, ca captivating stories about the trail. Um, then we'd go into news, any newsworthy items pertaining to the trail, and that donate functionality, which will be flushed out later. But um, we're building it with this in mind. So top to bottom, we'd have a nice slider showing, you know, nice captivating photos of each of the 12 towns. As we scroll down again, this is just the homepage. We have this nice uh, kind of woodsy uh, background with a map, uh, text to come on discovering the, uh, the trail, um, exploring the region, more kind of uh, economically tied to the, the outskirts of the trail and where people can you know, uh, shop and explore and that sort of thing. And then finding your way where we have uh, basically, you know, <clears throat> interactive maps of along the way of the trail. And then we finish up with this, these uh, trail tales. These are just stacks to give some uh, added entry points for the navigation. Um, I'm gonna slide down to, this is the first of several uh, pages for individual towns. I believe you've seen this one already, Thompson. And as Jean said, we're, we're really basing these where applicable uh, off of the uh, easy, easy maps. Um, so we'll have uh, from top to bottom again, a nice hero photo of your particular town, uh, a nice descriptor of what your town is and how it participates in the trail or how it interacts with the trail. A nice download where people can download their own printable versions of, the, of their uh, brochure. And then we come into, um, I don't want to call it a directory listing, but for lack of a better word, we'll call it that. This can be infinite. Um, you can have much more than this, but just for a uh, conversation, we start with six apiece. Um, so these are six, uh, let's call them areas of interest in, uh, in Thompson. And then we would go down with an interactive map. That's a placeholder for now. So, but wait, there's more. Um, so we did a, a mock-up for Portland as well. And you'll see it follows a similar consistency for global navigation. That way everything looks nice and clean and neat. So as we're going down our Explore the Region, when we select Portland, again, we have a, a, a nice couple graphs about Portland, some of the items that we can do there as well, and finishing up with the map. And as we go down further, here's one for Wyndham as well. And you're gonna see a similar format where we have the supporting text along the trail. This is where you would all come in. So whatever you would like highlighted above and beyond what's on the easy map, send it my way and we can incorporate it in there as we build these pages out. And then again, this would be an interactive map that would, uh, that would do all the map functionality. <clears throat> and as far as the trail tales piece, this was just some rough formatting of the first story that we have, but this would essentially be a blog uh, where people would be able to share content, share stories. Um, we'd have, we could archive an infinite amount of these stories. So um, this would be the first one that came in, which is a great piece from uh, Frank Zitkus. So. That's pretty much where we are. As I said, we're, uh, we're pretty far along the development stage and we'll be sharing a link 
uh, to all of this so you can see how it, uh, how it functions and how the navigation works. We should be sharing that with you by next week at this time. So things are going quite well. Great, Pete, thank you. Um, My so pleasure. We have a couple of questions. I have a couple of questions from on the chat. Um, one is uh, Pete, and you probably can answer this, although I can, but but I, I think it'd be helpful for you to answer it. The QR code that's on the easy maps, when you do that with your cell phone, what does that lead you to? Um, so it varies from uh, town to town. The one that you showed in particular, I believe it goes to a, um, what town was that that you had showed in your deck? Um, I would have mine? to scan it. Those were provided by each town. Yep. Uh, I had done East Hampton. Yeah, I believe that was an economic development link that that's a uh, sub page of their town hall site. But um, as they're supplied, for instance, for Wyndham, they have a tourism website, uh, whywyndhamct.com, and their uh, their QR codes go to different pages off of that. Um, for several of the towns, it was either a historical society or the town hall's website. Wherever wherever information is stored, we can generate them for any any web page. Okay. Um, and then Tom, uh, you had also asked about. Um, yes, I can provide a list of stakeholders. Um, and then the map on the QR code. Is there a plan to have QR codes on the mileage markers? That's part of the wayfinding plan. That is, um, we have suggestions that'll be as uh, done as part of this master plan. But a wayfinding plan, in and it of itself, um, is probably a more in-depth process. Um, primarily, there's a number number of reasons whether QR codes are going on mileage markers or on the trail. Um, I think that has to be sort of designed so that you ensure that when people have cell phone service, uh, for one, on the trail, um, so there are a lot of places that don't have that, um, and also that, it, the, that the QR code is giving them something that they can get to. There, there may be some, some fail safes that need to be further investigated, and we'll list those out in the plan, but I think that it's going to have to be a larger, uh, a larger um, kind of a mapping layout of how do QR codes work on the trail and what kind of information should they be providing? Um, I, here's an example of a, of a funny vignette. When I, I was on a trip in October and then um, there was a bench on a trail and it said, are you feeling lonely? You know, um, sit down and chat. And so there was a QR code <laughs> right next to it. And so you were like, well, what happens if I if I scan it, am I going to be chatting with somebody or is it, well, ultimately it leads you to a website about, you know, how to be, how to be friendly with people on the trail and how to make friends on the trail and other people walking. But you're like, hmm, what's going to happen with this QR code? And then also, is there a donation amount for each of the six per town interest? Not at this time. Um, this is sort of a placeholder, that, the website. So we're, it, we're still grappling with the, um, how to how to fund, how to manage the website. And that is not something that I want to, or the team that is the consulting team wants to decide on. That is something that really needs to be decided upon by the, by the 12 towns uh, representatives that are on the stakeholder committee, as well as the full stakeholder committee itself. Um, and okay, I think that's it. Um, so, and let's see, so, uh, okay, and, Want me to yeah, I think it'll go back to is, can people see the, there we go, um, okay, so that is, um, that's overall the, the, uh, the, the website, um, so what we're doing now also is I'm going to touch on this in two spots, but um, Quinn and Harry Pete has been um, has been working on sort of a uh, an element of an example of how a coding system could happen 
for wayfinding as a marketing tool. Um, you know, there's wayfinding signs of all different design on the trail that you could you could accomplish. But um, the what's been problematic in our evaluation of the trail is how to retain town identity at the same time that you're promoting the trail. So if you are going to put up wayfinding signs that are directing you to a town center or to a town um, lodging or not the, a gas or battery packs, if you happen to have an e-bike or uh, water, if you have a horse. Um, so where, um, where are the amenities? But um, we thought that in our discussion that the, that coming up with a color coding system where you on the, you could have the airline state park trail logo and the sign, but under it is, you know, a color coding scheme for each of the towns to have better identify them on the trail so that somebody's, and, and the re, there's a reason that we're doing that is that if you're, if you're going along the trail and you happen to want to, you're, 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 you're hitting a boundary, but you don't know where that boundary necessarily is. There might be a trail marker, but you missed it. If you see a color code, you, you're moving, there's recommendations within, you know, bike and pedestrian, but, but definitely bike, bike way um, criteria, design criteria. And one is being quickly visible while you're mobile. So if somebody's moving quickly on a bike or an e-bike, it's good for them to say, oh, uh, yeah, I just put yellow, that's Hebron or et cetera. So they're, they're, they can stop, but at least they have, if they're moving fast, they have a relative knowledge of where they are on the trail from a color scheme. Um, so this is this screen also references what we, um, Amy Patron has been working on for me, where she's going into each of the plans of conservation and development for each of the towns and finding if there is, um, this happens to be Columbia, um, but a recommendation for trails and possible connections. And relative to that wayfinding, um, it would be it, it would be a challenge because a lot of the in this particular area, so we'd have to come up with a solution. That's why I put the slide up because the trail is running through Hebron, but it is adjacent to Columbia. So where in these definitely in these circles do you um, show that Columbia is on the left side and whoops um, and Lebanon is on the east side. Um, so that's a solution that we're, we're trying to come up with, but um, we're, we're taking, as we take a look at each of the town plans of conservation development, we're trying to see who's missing a trail connection plans um, and who has them. And the next, and I will, I'll come back to that cross-checking to DOT road for safety after uh, John's presentation. So these are some of the guidelines. Um, you know, over here on the right, you can see that this is standard, um, you know, uh, ash tow uh, type of signage that is visible. This happens to be in Massachusetts in the Cape. Um, but mostly the guidance that we've been finding, and I tried to provide you some really great links that I had found about with story maps. I also have a story map for Connecticut, but this is a story map about how Massachusetts approached um, their wayfinding and design, wayfinding design. Um, not, and also uh, there's one in Montgomery County that had an interesting um, toolkit for design uh, on wayfinding. But the overall, it's keep it simple, be consistent and predictable. predictable. This is the, a really important thing. The simplicity is important. And then helping maintain, help people maintain the motion so that text and imagery, they don't, shouldn't have to stop and read all the time. Like, oh, let me stop and where am I? You know. So if there's ways of doing that in the wayfinding design, that can be really helpful. So, um, so one of what I'd like to do is invite some comments or insights that you have. And I've just given some prompt questions in case people don't know what to say, but um, what are the hurdles toward forming a 12 town uh, organization? Because uh, we're gonna be hearing about the Hop River Trail Alliance and how they're forming. Um, and is the website a good concept and valuable as a communication tool to the trail users and uh, intra-town? 
Uh, and what are some of the ideas for promoting diversity on the trail, the Airline State Park Trail? And I had mentioned that earlier that I've made a connection with, um, with a couple of groups. And is color coding the towns both on the trail and off trail for clarity the way to unify the region um, and while also promoting separate towns? So I welcome any comments from the group um, if anyone has some or questions or thoughts. I'm looking for get my team bigger here. I'm looking for any hands. It's a quiet group tonight. I got Bruce on the call. Usually it's Bruce and Kim. Gina, I have a question or a comment for you. Yes, please. Um, on the trail, especially on, on the trail itself, if you're going to color code it, you should um, take into a account who's going to respond there for an emergency because mm -hmm. if someone is in um, like the uh, example you gave there's yeah. the trail that goes through a tiny part of Columbia who has limited access to the trail as it is and someone else might be responding there if there was a person in in uh, that needed an ambulance or a fire department to come there to yeah. rescue them so if you keep the color on the bottom the color of who is going to be responding there when they call 911 if they have cell service they can say they're on the trail in, you know, Columbia. If that's the responding agency, it would, would be helpful. That's that's an excellent point, Greg. Um, and and what you 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 had my thought in mind. That's why I was thinking color coding is just like it's like I'm an orange, you know. I need yeah. help. <laughs> um, right. So um, all right. So I definitely will 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 factor that in. Anybody else have some questions thoughts? Is the website, I'm going to ask this question again at the end, but is the website a good idea? Is that something that we should keep moving on, which we're going to keep moving on anyway, but um, Lori? Did you have a question? Hi, June. Hi, Lori. How you doing? <laughs> Good. Okay. Um, Mike, you, you asked about hurdles to forming a 12-town organization. Mm -hmm. um, I would imagine that if the 12 towns are not interested in it, so I, I feel like you need to determine that first, like what is the interest level from the towns and how would you deal with something like six towns are in and the rest of them are not? <laughs> um, I like the website. I, I have to confess I haven't seen it live yet, but I'm looking forward to that. And um, that's all my brain has right now. All right, thanks, Laurie. Yes, it, it will be a challenge. Um, there is a lot of interest on the part of the towns. It's, um, but I, I think this is a good segue, unless there's any other questions. I think this is a good segue to, yeah? To, yeah? Anyone? yeah, I was gonna say something, Jean, on the- yeah, please. Um, one of the considerations on the organization of being 12 towns is very large. Um, on the hop, we have seven towns and that's plenty. So I don't know if there's a consideration for the different aspects of the management of the trail that the airline South is separated from the airline North. You have, you would have six towns on both sides and it's more manageable. If you do in-person meetings, it's more manageable, so on and so forth. Obviously the website absolutely should be all 12 towns on the, the airline, but um, you know, there's different aspects. So I would consider that going forward. That's an excellent point, John, because I, yeah, there is already that fate that, um, the North, the airline trail North group and, um, and, and it's a way of, of managing it in bite-sized pieces. Yeah. That's an excellent point. All right. Um, any other hands? Okay. So I think what I'm going to do is we're going to move forward. And um, John, um, you are up. I have um, introducing John Hankins of the Hop River Trail Alliance, and he's going to kind of give you an example of what they've done to form an organization and how how it came about. And um, we have a we have a couple of other slides, but I'll I'll let John kick it off. All right. Well, I guess what everyone's going to hear about is how you get a grassroots organization started with no money. Um, because that's 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 what we are at this point. 
Um, so like many good grassroots uh, organizations, we started at someone's dining room table, in this case on Stonehenge Lane in Bolton. Um, and our group started as a group that had been meeting for a couple of years called Bike Walk Bolton. And we were about improving bicycling and walking conditions within the town of Bolton, which included the airline, uh, the Hop River Trail, excuse me. And before long, we realized that most of our attention was on the Hop River Trail and not on the roads and, and sidewalks and so on in the town of Bolton. So we were doing projects like uh, getting bike repair stands uh, installed, maintenance days. We helped the DEP, we helped push the DEP along on a, a tunnel lighting project at Bolton Notch um, to get that into design. We were doing some good things, but we were realizing that we were really thinking bigger than just Bolton. It, it, what the, the good work we were doing in the town of Bolton, we said, this should be happening all up and down the trail. Um, and we started looking at the way that the, that the DEP and the in individual towns um, interacted. And Lori Giannotti and Kim Bradley know this very well, that the DEP, and I heard this in the last presentation uh, that uh, you gave earlier, uh, what was it, last week, last Thursday, Gene. Mm -hmm. Individual towns all have separate agreements with DEP. So DEP is dealing for the Hop River Trail with seven different agreements, with the airline trail, with 12 different agreements. Um, and I imagine they don't all read the same. Um, the towns, there's inconsistent involvement between the towns. Some are really into it, like in our district, Vernon is all over it. Uh, other towns, not so much. Um, and then you realize that there's no single entity that the D, that, that talks to the DEP. Everybody's doing it independently. and. Uh, we actually approached, Kim Bradley was rather new at the time, but we approached, and I, Lori, I think this was sort of way at the end of your tenure and at the very beginning of Kim's, but we approached one or both of you um, and said, what if we had a single entity that you could talk to that represented the entire body, the entire political body of the entire route of the Hop River Trail? Would that be a useful thing? And they said, well, that would be awesome. You know, if we could have one group that was thinking about uh, applying standards consistently across the, across the whole trail, and the DEP could be working with that one entity to get it done, um, you'd have something there. Um, and we thought you know, a good example for us was signage. If you get out on the trail now, there, there's mile markers. Everyone's got a different idea of how the mile markers should be done, right? So they start, they stop, you'll see mile four, you don't know where mile zero is, it hardly does you any good. So that was just an example, but we realized there was, there was projects like that that we could help to facilitate as a group. Um, so our next step was to ask ourselves how, why anybody would listen to six people that are sitting around a dining room table in Bolton. And we realized that if we wanted to get standing with the DEP, um, our best avenue was to get the towns involved in the organization. So we named ourselves the Hop River Trail Alliance, and all it was was a name at that point. We didn't have much behind it. Yeah. But all of us knew somebody in each of the towns that, uh, every, all of us knew somebody in the towns that were uh, along the route. And I think I saw Ann Dunnock on the call from Columbia. She was how I got into Columbia, actually. So she dragged the first selectman to our first meeting, or the, or the uh, excuse me, the town manager, and and that was that was kind of typical of how it went. Everybody knew somebody, and we went to the towns and we said, identify somebody in your town that you would uh, designate for this new organization that could represent the interests of the town. And generally, we were not interested in a citizen. We were much more interested in a town employee that could, that could have easy access to the town manager and town government in general. And much to our surprise, every single town responded. And I think I heard a question earlier, you know, what if the towns don't get on board? In our case, every one of those seven towns jumped on board. Um, and, and it was interesting to me that the different towns took a different approach. In Wyndham, we have the town engineer. In, Co in Columbia, we have the public works director. In Coventry, we have the town planner. In Andover, we have the town manager. 
and so on and so forth. We recognize that if you're Manchester, you don't work the same way that Bolton does. They're different scales. You're gonna, you're probably gonna get different level people. In, in a small town, you're gonna get the top guy. In a much bigger town, you're gonna get someone a couple layers down. And that was perfect. And the majority of people that that we got in that committee are already emotionally invested in the trail. So for us, that gave us an engaged group. No one, no one was as engaged as the four or six people that were sitting around the table in Bolton. Um, but the individuals that we got from the towns all were engaged enough to show up at every meeting that we have. I mean, we get great attendance from the towns whenever, whenever we get together. Um, from once we'd identified the individuals from the towns, um, the next thing we did was we we sat down with Bruce Donald. Bruce, we got, I know you're on the call. We got, we pulled you in at some point. And Bruce had enough experience with groups like ours that he had bylaws that he could provide us that we could then tweak for our own circumstances. So pretty quickly, we not only had we named a board of directors of those uh, seven people that were identified by the towns. We had a set of bylaws. We voted on the bylaws. And then the, the board of directors now consists of seven individuals, each one from each of the towns. The officers that they voted in, president, vice president, and you got the president, the vice president on the line today, John Hankins, me, and John Bull, the president, vice president, respectively. Um, the, the board of directors then voted, those people that were sitting around the kitchen table, uh, they voted for those six people into the officer slots, at least for this first year. And you know who knows what it'll be after, after this initial period. We have no checkbook. We do not have a, a penny to our name, um, but we have chutzpah. So <laughs> we, uh, we were looking for that initial project to try to get the towns working together and the, we, we came back to the signage, and this was about the time the DEP Rec Trails Grant uh, program came out at the beginning of, uh, I guess that was December 1st. Right around there was when we were getting all this formed, and we said, why not? Let's, uh, let's jump into this DEP Rec Trails Grant and see what we can put together for signage. So John and I and several others have been meeting since the beginning of December, and we've got a grant application pretty well put together. Um, the, a challenge for an organization that's a startup like ours, that's not yet incorporated with the state, we're, we're sort of going through the incorporation process, 501c3 and so on. And Gene, we can talk about that a little more in the Q&A. But the one thing we needed to make the grant application work was somebody with money, a fiduciary. And the way that grant application works is you spend the money, you know, you buy the signs or have a contract to put in the post. Someone's got to pay the contractor, submit the request to DEP, and then get reimbursed. So someone's got to lay out cat, real cash. And we realized it was not us. And DEP realizes it's not us. So we've got to get a fiduciary on board. And uh, I was talking to Gene yesterday about this. You don't get what you don't ask for. Um, and we asked two towns along the way um, whether they would be willing to serve as fiduciary. We've got a, so we've got a primary town that's, that's uh, gonna vote on that with their board of directors in a couple of weeks. And we've got a backup plan. So um, we feel good that, that we've got a fiduciary. Uh, Kim Bradley comes to the majority of our meetings. So, so she's very aware of what we're doing. Um, Bruce comes to most of our meetings as well. And Dave Buckley is uh, the, the park supervisor for the district that includes the Hot River Trail. Um, we've also engaged him. Um, so do you want me to talk any about the signage, Gene? Um, sure, I can I can go to the next slide. Um, let me bring it over. I'm here. gonna hit this really quick because yep. I, I, this, this isn't go. really about the signage, but I thought there might be something here that you might be interested in. And this will be in the, if, if you, uh, if you, if after the presentation you 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 pull this up and get out your magnifying glass, you'd be able to read all this stuff. But essentially, we're proposing five types of signs. 
There'll be mileage markers at quarter mile intervals. The fire marshals were really insistent that it needed to be quarter mile intervals so that if somebody falls down, uh, the, the emergency responders know where to go. We didn't use color coding, but every, every one of these quarter mile markers indicates a mileage from 0, 0.0, ground zero of this trail system is the intersection with the airline trail. So starting at the airline trail, that's mile 0, 0.0. Manchester's mile 20.5, and then we've got the Rockville Spur we included as well. So we're 25 miles of trails. Uh, we'll have mileage markers the whole way along that, that have the town name identified and the miles. So if someone falls down, they can say, I'm in Coventry at mile marker 18.5. And that will be very clear to emergency responders. Um, we're going to be going to identify the town lines. Um, wherever the wherever the trail intersects another trail, like for instance the airline trail at the terminus in Willimantic, there will be directional signs there, and that can be very confusing to people. You know, go this way for airline south, go that way for airline north, go this way for the Hop River Trail. Um, we're also going to have uh, something that is sorely needed, which is as you cross streets, what's the name of the street you're coming across? Um, we're also going to have a set of signs facing drivers. So that anybody coming across the trail is going to know for sure, I am now coming across the Hop River Trail. Um, when we started this project, I think the Hop River Trail was only identified in one or two spots along, along its 20, 20 mile length. Um, that will change. Everyone will know what this is. And then finally, over on the right side of this graphic, wayfinding signs. Um, at eight locations, there'll be a sign that said with seven or eight locations saying Bolton Notch this way, uh, you know, airline trail that way with a number of miles. And that starts to connect it because we've all run into people out on the trail and they, they don't even know the trail goes to, they're in Vernon and they don't even know the trail goes to Willimantic, literally, um, which is amazing. Um, so this is really gonna help that process. Um, John and I are sitting down with Tom Tyler Director of State Parks on uh, next Monday. We're going to lay this all out to him. I would not be at all surprised if some of this changes. It is their trail. Um, they are the decider. We are not, but we think we've got some good ideas, and uh, and we are we are pretty confident in our chances of getting this grant. So um, we are we're we're feeling great about everything we've done to this point. And I'll, if there's questions, I don't know if there's time here, Jean, but I'll let you figure that out. Um, yep. And I, I just put in an extra slide with a lot more of the signage that's on the Hot River Trail. And then um, and those are just some fun links to view, um, trail user perspectives. Um, they were just like people getting on the trail and riding the trail and giving their impressions of the of the Hot River Trail. And there's a few of them for the airline trail, but I did find a preponderance of um, of uh, marketing for the Hop River Trail by YouTube users. Um, so I thought I'd include those. Um, so um, here's some comments and insights uh, I'm looking for, but um, if you have questions for John, but what are the opportunities to partner with the Hop River Trail Alliance? Are there advantages to partnering with them? Um, and should the airline state park trail towns partner up in wayfinding design at a future date? Um, similar to what you what John just described and who are the obvious leaders for an airline state park trail quote unquote alliance or whatever you want to call yourself so um, you may not have those answers um, but I thought I'd put those prompts in the slide um, I'm, uh, and if you have any other comments or some questions for John uh, we're entertaining those right now Steve I uh... Hi, John. <laughs> How you doing? Um, I, um, I can only echo the things that my friend John have said. I, I look at, I've been looking from a little bit of afar with the folks uh, that are, are forming the alliance. And immediately I thought back to the airline trail. It, I, I've said on a couple of different occasions that it all, each of the trails has different needs and has different purposes. But when you take that, 10,000, 25,000 foot view, both the Hop, the Hop River Trail and branches of the airline trail coming out of Willimantic make a tremendous system. We've talked here a little bit about how, why would people come here? Why would they do that? Well, I think that it's a, when you put it all together, it, 
and, and there's more coming, it ends up being 75 miles of gravel-based trail that's kind of out in the middle of very quiet places. And um, I, there's, I think there's gotta be some good synergy between the Hop River Trail and the Airline Trail. I mean, they, they come together in Willimantic and there's no reason why you can't come down out of Bolton Notch, come to Willimantic and go back out to Goodwin State Forest. That's, that's a ride, it's just two different trails, but it, that, in the future, that's where that might be. To the point about when we talked about a lot of what wayfaring signage should look like on the airline trail, um, if the Hop River Alliance is successful and they have a good model, boy, it would be nice to think that the signage across all, all both trails is unique and about the same. I think that would be very, very helpful. And um, uh, again, I, it makes, each of the trails has different needs in different towns to deal with. Um, and I, I've, some, some folks in, in involved in this kind of process have said, you know, it would be nice to have an East of the River Trails Alliance. And I'm not sure that's independent, whether that works as maybe um, other towns have seemed to be comfortable with uh, Council of Government uh, affiliations, maybe a cross committee of, from the Council of Governance group. But again, to kind of be talking together, if some town is, is starting to do some uh, work on their parking areas in their town with gravel, and the next town over can turn around and, and, and chip in for some of the, the gravel that's being put down, then both towns might be able to do it. Things like that are are part of what that that larger synergy should be. So I'm I'm again um, uh, that's my point of view. I've always thought that if you're looking at what you where do I stay, where where am I going to eat, what am I going to do, that's a that really is a regional question. And you can spend, you know, it's easy to spend a a four day weekend out in out in, in our neck of the woods and with your bike or with your feet and, and have a good time. So my two cents. Thank you, Steve. Those are, those are really great insights. I, I, I totally agree with you. Um, it, is, uh, it is somewhat difficult. There are experts in, in promoting the eastern, the eastern part of Connecticut. Um, uh, the Last Green Valley comes to mind. They're, they're very good at it. Um, but if there's a consortium of, of groups that can can come together to to really um, to really help the user who's visiting the region, otherwise there's an invisibility. I mean, Eastern Connecticut, um, and I grew up on that side of the river, so um, I can vouch for the fact that it is the invisible side of Connecticut sometimes. But in talking with so many people, and my experience is that. There's something very unique about um, about this area that can be that that has tremendous potential for being marketed as as the uh, the quiet corner. The um, it there's um you know in that in that I now live on the west side of the river, but um, there's a there's definitely a cultural divide uh, by that. And I used to work for the River River C uh, Council of Governments and the Connecticut River Estuary. And, and the river divides Connecticut, but yet it unites it. But it, culturally, there are very distinct regions. And there's an opportunity here to band together to really promote what's so valuable about this region. So I love those insights, Steve. You're, you're spot on. Um, any other questions? Comments? Insights? Riz? There nope, we go. There now are. I unmuted. A um, couple of comments. One was on mileage markers. When we started developing our trail, we thought about why would we have individual mile markers for our town when we're next to East Hampton? And they were going to have a different one. And we're, then we're next to Middletown. And we put ours in with the thought of the Connecticut State um, Airline Trail Park Committee would look at one from point A to the end and be able to continually add to theirs. While you could have your local one, we still think that having a, a state park trail mileage would also help people who do this periodically. We talked to people coming from Massachusetts who said, you know, every week I take my kids for about 10 miles. 
and then we stop and we go back home. The following week, we pick up where we left off and we continue. It would be really nice if we had mileage markers that did the whole trail. So that was one thing. My other comment was your little pamphlet, those little map pamphlets, um, St. Clements in Portland puts it in their wedding packages. <laughs> and what happened was people from New York looked in their package looking for things to do and said, well, how can I get to this trail, which was all of a quarter of a mile away. So those things really help. If you can get those into your businesses and let them share it, it brings business back to them also. Um, and lastly, um, when we talked about uh, the uh, information and tourism, the Middlesex Chamber, which is in Middletown, but covers a good section of this state, um, said to me, Riz, any inform information that you or East Hampton has that are part of our division, chamber division, um, send it to me and I will put it on our big tourist information panel. So there are other opportunities to share that information. The hard part is finding them and finding the person you got to get to. Um, but since we both in East Hampton, Dave, the town manager, and I attend the same meetings, and uh, Ryan from Portland, town manager, or for us, the first selectman, we all hear the same thing at the same time. And that asks the cross question, how come you're doing that and we're not? And it helps the town management um, work together a little bit more because they're public about it. And we're in those chamber meetings, everybody knows, and that draws some additional questions. And it gives us some additional support in the community. The, the businesses hear us trying to bring in businesses, especially with the QR codes, what's available in the town for, where's the gas station, where's the restaurant, where's the drugstore, et cetera. And they like that. And that's mine. Those are really good comments, Riz. Um, yep, I, I, I remember working with the, we did, I did the, uh, the Grow Smart region plan for River Cog. So I worked very closely with the chamber and um, when we were developing developing that at River Cog. And there is a value to um, adding um, adding synergy with partnerships. Um, and we went through that at the last workshop about um, with Connecticut Visit. Um, and the, the I, I would say that the the primary the primary goal of this plan and the mission was to figure out how to promote the town centers um, and their proximity to the airline trail. And the website for the reason we put in for a draft website um, and will be an active website um, that we will be populated um, going forward and maintaining it is that to find the airline trail region, to find the towns as proximity to the airline trail region, um, you have to you have to do numerous clicks. As a user, it's exhausting to try to find the airline trail support services, what the businesses are, what's happening, all in a visit type mode. So it's it's a step by step process, and we'll have recommendations in the plan on how to proceed further, um, and and also taking in everybody's comments. Um, Okay, I'm not seeing anybody else. So oh, oh, uh, I have one uh, yeah, a quick thing, Jeannie. Um, Steve mentioned uh, in the Eastern Alliance, Eastern Connecticut. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I, I kind of look at, I was hoping a structure would form would be, uh, you know, in the future, would be an advocate group for each of the trails, uh, each of the deep trails in Connecticut. So the other two that haven't been mentioned are the Moosa Valley Trail mm -hmm. and then the Larkin Trail. Yep. And, you know, and if there was airline north and south, that's five deep trails. Those trails are pretty much managed all very similarly. Ideally, we would have five, you know, volunteer advocate groups and then five, you know, mini alliances that those five alliances, the leaderships would meet and there'd be, um, you know, collaboration at the top level. Um, you know, the smaller unit is more manageable. But then you're getting the you know interplay or whatnot between the all of the deep managed trails. Good, good points. Really good points. I like that. Um, so um, going forward, we have the uh, for I'm going back to wayfinding. Um, I think that there's a, a you know I think there's some value to 
uh, what seeing what happens with the Hop River Trail Alliance on their wayfinding. But I just wanted to illustrate going forward that once they once we can get a pattern of understanding what's happening with Hop River and how successful that is, maybe the maybe the opportunity is to just continue to promote it, promote the airline trail and the towns through the website, and then come up with the plan for the wayfinding at a future locate future time. So if you get a chance, you can make give me comments back on the chat room about that. Um, or you can email me separately and anything you have questions or comments, you certainly can email me at any time and I will include those in the um, in the discussions that um, will be listed in the in the plan. But um, overall, town by town consistency for the 12 towns and the Hop River Trail is that town centers, the services to and from the airline state park trail, and then consistency with DEP state park branding in the trail, coordination with applied ASHTO standards for bike ped signage on Connecticut state highways, and then safety town by town marketing, and then trail user guidance. Those are all the important components of the wayfinding coordination and marketing. Um, this is just, I'm gonna walk you through a couple of examples since we have the time. So wayfinding partnerships, this is, um, this is important elements. Um, this comes, uh, I've had lots of experience with this. So I do, I can, I can speak from experience that this is, these elements are critical. So we have state roads to the town centers and there are 13 state road crossings on the airline state park trail. Some of them are overpass, um, the majority of them are, un, uh, are at grade, um, are at grade crossings. So coordination on those state roads is required um, and coordination overall is required, but town, between towns and councils of government, because councils of governments are the, are the urban, um, they do their unified planning program every few years and you can either get a project into that unified work program or the unified work program also gives permission to the staff at the COGS to work on your plan. So if there's something that you want for the councils of governments to work on you for you uh, to work, uh, whether it's mapping or it could be um, uh, any types of, of trail infrastructure planning or um, helping you get money into the CMAC funding or to special trail funding through DOT. It's critical that you work with your councils of governments. That said, also it's important that the councils of governments work together about, because there are four of them on this airline trail. So that goes back to that comment I made before about in the previous workshop about communication, the, the issue of sitting down once a year or maybe twice a year to go with these with all the people sitting down and going through communication of what's happening on the trail in the coming year. Applications for, for new studies or new grants or things that people would want to see that the COGS do or CDEP do or conduct do. And then between 12 towns and the Council of Governments, DOT and DEP, and then between DEP and CONDOT to talk across the board between the two agencies. So here's also some links that will give you some of DO, DOTs I provided you earlier with some other inspirational sites. These are CONDOTs, different sections um, of information that gives you publications on design guidelines for pedestrian um, and multimodal networks. Um, so there's some good, good info here. Um, and this, this sign over here, um, is all about the AASHTO standards. And then we do have a couple of transit districts that could provide conceivably, and I've talked to them, uh, Wyndham Transit District could conceivably provide service to trailheads with, with bike racks on the front of their, um, on front of their vehicles. Uh, and so that's an opportunity. And this is a storyboard that is part of a DOT, a CONDOT uh, process. Um, FHAI plan, they did the bike ped plan and, and it's an ArcGIS map. If you go to this link, you can go through this storyboard and find your own analysis, but this is a sample of analysis that I ended up looking at. So this particular map is the on-road bicycle planning network, and it's a layer that displays identified on-road routes and travel connections with bicyclists most want to travel on through the state. So this red area I overlaid is the airline trail. Um, the network is not inventory of all road bicycle facilities that are currently exist, but it is a network that's intended to provide DOT with guidance on where future improvements should occur 
and regions and municipalities with a base network to expand upon and make local connections to. Okay, follow that one. Next slide, I'm gonna give you an example. So here I'm using the town of Thompson. Here is another, um, another map based on the previous one. This is road suitability. So this is their, this is the airline trail here. And the under the transparency, I put down a little bit, but you can see that these are all the road suitability index. So these are all of our town centers. And a number of these town centers, you can zoom in on yours. It's a zoomable map um, that I provide the link to. And you can see these reds highlighted are really terrible roads for bicyclists. So if you're in a town center, um, in say in Columbia, and you want people to come from the airline trail to access your service, take a look at these. Right now, these are, roads are somewhat either because of high average, tra uh, average traffic volume, daily traffic volume, or because there are no um, road shoulders, or traffic speeds are too high, um, or there's a high accident rating on that road. So suitability on the road is defined by DOT for their investments in your town, okay? Mark that in your mind because I'm gonna come back to that in a second. So if you're Thompson, and these are points of access from the Airline State Park Trail, and I'm trying to get to Thompson's Town Center where it just so happens that Thompson's doing a very innovative project um, that they got awarded a USDA grant uh, a, great, a huge USDA grant to do a, um, a business development in their town center. If I'm all riding on the trail and I want to get into that town center to see where they're doing with this agriculture center, the business development incubator, um, oh, I guess this one is probably my best spot, but there's a little section of red. What do we do here? So it's important for planning purposes, and we're gonna go by this um, in the plan, town by town, to take a look at road suitability to town centers so that you begin to see it. But I wanted to provide you that link. So that's an example, but I wanted to produce, and this, this really brings us back to case study on why um, collective thinking, collective approach, and as John Hankin said, the chutzpah, to go forward forward with it. I want you to take a note of this slide. Um, I happen to live in this area. Um, and right now that we've got some road closures on the East Haddam Bridge. And it's there, it's closed between seven at night until six in the morning or six at night until seven in the morning because they're building a $55 million walkway on the East Haddam Swing Bridge. This has been something that the towns have wanted for, since I worked in this area, it's not that long. They have wanted this crossing for about the last seven years. This has been brought up. And they, with enough push and enough huspa, they went ahead and they finally got this into their STIP, their State Transportation Improvement Program and funded. So don't underestimate the collective power of the Hop River Trail Alliance and the 12 towns working together to access funding. It's really critical for not to work alone and not to think small. Think big and big dreams can come true, especially with $55 million worth of a walkway, which is just this little section here of a bridge. So really great stuff happening right here. Love it. And what I also overlap and overlay lay it on top of the road suitability index for bicyclists. Um, so you can see right now it's not very suitable. So once they get this done, there's going to need to be some work done here. And there's going to need to be some work done in different sections that this particular bridge connects one side of the river to the other. It just so happens that you have a village here and a village, the Good Speed Opera House. So there was a, a huge momentum to build this project and it was very successful. So we're near the end. It's 5, 635. How to engage again town officials to participate. Don't expect you to answer, but um, if you can put your thinking cap on, I would love to figure out a way of including that in the plan and how to kickstart of that 
And who would you, because who are those people who are not on this call that you'd like to appoint to be leaders on the trail, on the committee, or who would you try to get to come to a table and take, take this and run with it? And then should towns provide funds to kickstart the 12 town stakeholder group and is $1,000 a year per year from the towns reasonable, whether it comes from their airline state park committee trail or conservation commission or their economic development commission. Um, and I'm open to comments and that is pretty much it. Any comments, ideas? Oh, Steve. I, I didn't want to, to leave this meeting without, um, I wanted to mention one thing that's been on my mind for a while. Um, it's a critical piece of getting through Putnam. And I, I know that uh, we got Maureen down there in Pomfret and they're out and she's getting flagging tape, I heard. I read it in her minutes of her meetings, <laughs> going out and starting to make the link between Pomfret and Putnam. However, um, it's, it's a wonder to me that from the end of where the airline would go in, in Putnam, you, there is no definitive marking or anything that tells you how you can get back up to Route 12 on the Thompson line to then go further north. And just somewhere in there, I know there's plans being done to make it a more grander plan and how to get, how to get around a, a right of way that's tricky. But for the time being, some kind of on-street marking that I guess would have to be done in Putnam to say, go out to the end of Kennedy Drive and then go over to the new town office building and library over on 44 and then swing back on Route 12. Um, the, the, lack of, the, the lack of signage to get you from one end to the other creates um, a gap that's solvable in the long, in the long term with a, uh, with a right away stuff. But for the short term, you can't get from the end of the airline trail as it comes down to the Quinnebog River to to, to the to the Thompson line and out through up to, to Thompson because um, no one knows where that trail goes. Um, and and again, it takes you through the center around the center city of Putnam uh, a little bit. But if that if that could be a suggestion or an inclusion, I, I know there's some staff changes there at the on their committees and stuff, but. Um, as, a, as an outsider who sits there and says and looks at it, I go, wow, that's um, I, that's always been a big a big gap that's very solvable, and I just had figured out I can't figure out in my own head like why. So, hi, Jean. This is Karen. Hi, Karen from Thompson. I'll just say we've been working on this <laughs> <laughs> with Putnam. I mean, Putnam now has a committee, and they have applied for a grant, and they have a route, and they have a plan, but. It's in progress, but we I, don't we don't have a temporary route. We're still dealing with the railroad. Karen, I I, I am I'm I think I'm aware of, of most of that, but from right now, if you if there was some kind of logo or sign that went north on Kennedy Drive up to 171, hung a right down to the new town hall, and then out to out to Route 12, you're taking it through a commercial area where there's lots of places to eat or investigate or have a good time or look at the artwork in the, in the parks. And then when you go out Route 12, you're going by one of my favorite places, Deary Brothers, and then you're gonna get jump back onto the airline proper right at that parking area. And um, there's no identifying markers. I, 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 I am all supportive of a very complex and tricky plan in the long term. but boy, um, even right now, the only resource that I've found in looking for that is the folks on the Thompson Trail Committee uh, where they have a, a couple of routes that actually bypass the center of Putnam and suggest going out over West Thompson Dam and down through South Woodstock to get back on the airline trail. But so, uh, you know, that's it's a meeting, it's ideas. So I throw my idea out there. No, it's great. It's great. It's good to have these ideas. And I, I think that um, it talks to also um, something that we have to think about is there are the sections that are not complete, the sections that are that are um, the gaps. Um, do, do you know how how do we promote the trail while also having those gaps? And how can we do 
the the Steve, you bring up a good point. How can we look at just short term fixes while bigger plans are in the making? So, Anne, do you have a question? Um, no, I have oh, a thought. comment. Yes. Um, you in in a previous slide, you suggested that towns might kick in money. Mm -hmm. If you if you're serious about that, we better move very fast because we're in budget season. Right. <laughs> to our next right now. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait a whole year. No, it's a very good point. And I did actually reach out um, to town officials. Um, and I it was um, I reached out about two months ago or a month ago. And it was uh, a little bit like crickets um, in the room. But um, that's why I brought up the question. So I have a backup plan. And I'm wondering what you think of it. But um, I was thinking that uh, and I, I we can talk about it at the next workshop. But um, I'm going to bring it up. Um, I'm going to put the pressure on some of the town uh, or town officials to be at that meeting um, is going for another small grant, but very small, nothing like this one, um, but something where um, the group would go for something just to co maintain cohesiveness to give you guys an extra year so that you can form a group and maintain the website because uh, Kim brought that up on the last call that um, you know a small amount of money could be put forward to just at least maintain the website keep it going and you'd have to appoint a committee to kind of do that and to manage that um, and to John's point John Hankins point we we need a fiduciary um, I'm retiring but um, so RCMD could conceivably be a fiduciary, but John had a good point that maybe one of the towns should could be a fiduciary and have some some definite investment in the in the project that they they feel so strongly about the the region as a whole that they'd be willing to support that. Um, so but we'll bring that up on the next call. But I, I totally agree with you, Anna, and I put it out there, but. You know, and I've worked with um, I've worked with wonderful town officials for for over thirty years, and um, I know that it's it's sometimes difficult for them to register what's going on on these types of projects when they're they're knee deep in the day to day functioning, especially small towns. So, but I'll try again. Any other thoughts, comments? Because we are a little bit over, but I wanted to honor anybody's thoughts or comments. I was just gonna, I was yes, just gonna John. add, Gene, that um, Columbia and Willamette are the only towns that are in both the trails. So, if uh, both trails were looking for money from the towns, perhaps their allotment could be cut in half to five hundred dollars. <laughs> right there, you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, so. Next, uh, the next workshop is the 19th. And at that, at that meeting, we're gonna discuss roles and responsibilities. I'll have a little org chart um, and I'm gonna try to get as many of the town officials onto that workshop. I'm gonna send a special email out to them. Um, so again, send me comments um, if you have any. And um, it's been great having you guys on board. I really appreciate all the comments. It's helping inform this plan, it really is. Okay, have a great Wednesday um, and uh, rest of the week. I'll see you on Thursday, possibly. Thank you, Jim. Okay, Thank you. bye. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, John. Thank you, everybody.